Hi, and welcome back to Best Drink Recipes. I'm Eli Mountjoy. Today, we're going to be doing a very special review, and we are privileged, honored, and excited to do this because, as you can see, this is the classic Don Julio. And we're pretty excited about this for a lot of reasons, but first and foremost is, well, I love tequila. I'm a tequila guy by trade, by heart. It's my first love, my ain true love. It was tequila, and it is to this day. I love a lot of other things, but tequila has always been the center. And so to be able to do this, this is great. Of course, I've had this before. Most of you probably have had this before. If you're not, you may have been living on the moon or under a rock or in a cave or wherever you are. If you have been, today is your day. You get, you're gonna, about to get introduced to something pretty cool. But what I've never done is taken the time to do um, the background, the history, the lore behind the myth, the man, the legend, Don Julio. And it's a cool story. So we'll get into a little bit of that and we'll get into some tasting. And afterwards, we'll get into some actual making of uh, cocktails, whether they're actually citrus-based or spirit-forward. We're gonna do all of it. And we're going to be excited to do it. And I, myself, will be particularly excited to drink them. So first, the man, the myth, the legend. What's interesting about this man was he, uh, he started distilling when he was 17 years old. This was in 1942. So, he was just a lad, and this was back in the day before tequila was even around. In the 50s, um, 40s, 50s, that's kind of when uh, vodka came on the scene. It was like the white whiskey, because it was predominantly whiskey till then. So nobody knew about uh, tequila, and if they did, it was kind of known as like the farmer's drink. So it was nothing really special. But um, what was so am amazing about this was he eventually handed this to his sons, the whole business. And on his 60th birthday, which I believe was 1985, his sons commemorated and celebrated that event by creating this brand, Don Julio. And uh, they did the, the Blanco, the Reposado, and the Añejo. Of course, right now we just have the Blanco. We'll be reviewing the others later. So to stay with the Blanco, what makes this one special is this is as close to the Blue Agave Weber plant as you'll get unless you go to Jalisco, which is where this is from, in the highlands. And in the highlands, this produces a very special kind of uh, tequila versus the lowlands. The highlands gives a little brighter, a little more um, fruit forward, a little sweeter, a little crisper taste because there's more sun and there's more water, but it's also in, uh, you know, it's in kind of the shadow of a, uh, a big volcano. And so we've got all this rich soil by which these can grow. Now the difference is, Don Julio was uh, what they called a man of the fields. He liked spending time out there. And his quote was, if you have passion, you have everything. Which is a great quote when you think about it. Whatever you're doing, you put your everything into it. You got that passion, and no matter what you're doing, you've got that fulfillment, that fullness of life. And that's what he would do. He would be out in the fields, and he would plant the agave Weber, Weber plants a little further apart and that allowed them to grow a little bit bigger. And he also harvested them only at their absolute maturation. He'd go and like hand pick them. A lot of these now just go and just scoop them up and take them in. He would take the select ones. And that's important because you actually can define and refine a distilled spirit that's actually a step above everything else. And that's where this comes into play. This was the first one that became known as the first premium tequila that came in the market. And I do believe it was. So one of the things that's worth noting that he also kind of took an interest in active thing in was the Blue Weber agave plant has a waxy resin on the outside and that's to, pre to preserve it and um, basically keep it from getting shrunken under the blistering hot, hot sun and then, and then crushed under the cold, cold nights these extreme temperatures. And the waxy resin at night opens up and allows the plant to breathe and take in water. And then during the day, it kind of creates this, this barrier so that things just don't get boiled. The thing about this is it's caustic to humans. So people that go, um, you know, like, they don't know anything about tequila, they'll like throw one on their back and they'll just like rash up because it's so, it's so caustic and it's immediate, it's not comfortable. So you'd only ever want it on your shoulder and nowhere else. But with the, the, name, the name of the people who harvest this are called the hemidors. So he was like the guy with the koa, which is like a flat shovel or a spade. 
and you'd take it and quarter it and break it up so that you could put it onto a mule or whatever and put it, take it to the tajon, which is like a big stone that would be drug around by a mule and crush it down. He, every step of this way, he took extra measures to refine the process. So for instance, it was like an unprecedented 72 hour um, uh, maturation uh, where he would like roast and steam the piñas, which were the blue agaves as they were known, and get this rich agave nectar. Everything he did was a little extra, a little more. And this was unprecedented back in the day. Back in the day being, you know, 70s, 80s when he was coming up. And then when the brand was established, 80s, 90s. Now, of course, technology is upon us. Everybody knows there are some really incredible tequilas out there, but this guy was really pioneering the way. So, that's kind of a long, long-winded explanation, but also giving reverence to the guy who pioneered this path, who showed all the extra hard work and measures taken pays off in the end when you have a spirit like this. Now, I've never just done this and drank it neat and tried to, you know, let it rest on my palate, on the nose and, and on the tongue and see what comes out of it. So I'm excited to do that. Now, before we get into this bottle, there's one more thing I want to make mention about. That is, you can see how it's this shorter bottle. It used to be traditional that it was a long, elegant, tall bottle. And everybody, everybody had it like that. Don Julio was the first brand to bring it down to this short little bottle. And he did that because he wanted people to be able to drink it at a table and be able to sit like this and not be obstructed by a bottle, but actually look over into the eyes of your family members, your friends, or whoever it is you're drinking with. The guy was thinking about the whole experience. And that's why the bottle comes in shape like this. The dude was revolutionary. I mean, he was thinking about every step of this process. So cheers to you, Don Julio. We are now going to taste your fine spirit. So off with the plastic. And now the top. That's beautiful, it's really nice. I'd say already we have some notes of uh, citrus, lemon, fresh lemon, lime, grapefruit, Let's pour a little. I do, I love that sound every time. So, clear, clean, as a Blanco should be. Basically from, you know, the field to here, it's as close as you'll get. And speaking of that, a cool little thing you can do is I'm going to put, before I taste it, a little bit into my hand, about the size of a quarter or something like that. I'm gonna rub it together. I'm gonna do that until the alcohol has evaporated. And I'll know that it's evaporated because when it starts getting sticky and tacky like that, alcohol is gone and you can smell your hands. Do this wherever you are, at home, at the bar. What you're smelling is the blue agave. Now back to when we were talking about that waxy resin that is caustic to your skin, of course it also tastes like shit, now, pardon my French, but that's when you get the crappy well tequila that you taste, and that's where the whole salt and lime came from. It's because people had to cover up this, this, this waxy resin that people hastily put in in order to produce their product. When you're taking a lot of extra steps like this, you, you remove that so you get a much finer taste, and also, you can smell the plant. Now, that's incredible. You can smell the plant from which this came. How amazing is that? I mean, you can get like in touch with the people who made this. All right, so back to the tasting. Let's do that. Let's take our first taste. Hmm. Oh, well, that's very bright. Metallic, I would say. Um, it's got a clean, crisp finish. I am getting a um, salivatory response, which is a good thing. Definitely the citrus is in there. And even, um, it even finishes with a little bit of black pepper. It's nice. This 
this is very clean. This is a very clean tequila. Not a lot of burn, not a lot of bite, especially going down. It's warming, it's welcoming. It makes you want to drink it. I could drink it just like this. My favorite is this with a squeeze of lime. You could do it on, a, on the rocks, sip it just like this. But I also like this because it's a Highland tequila. It's bright, it's, it's, it's forward, it, it works really well in cocktails. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to feature this in a few cocktails and show what this is capable of doing. So if you'd like to find them uh, online, you can get all kinds of more information and like that. But well, for now, I'm going to tell you that this is, a, is an exceptional tequila. We are happy to review this. We're honored and it's definitely worth the money. So, well, I sneak a little extra sip there. If you would like to see any of these cocktails that we're going to make, you can find them all along the bottom here, here in the middle or on the side. If you guys would like to subscribe, comment, tell us what you think, how are we doing? Uh, what kind of drinks would you like to see us make? What would you like to see us do? We would love to hear from you. And we are Best Drink Recipes, and if you'd like to see any of the recipes that we're going to make featuring the Don Julio Blanco, you can find them here, here, or there. So thank you for watching. I'm Eli Mountjoy. We look forward to seeing you guys at the next drink.